Hi, welcome back. Um, on my last video, a uh, subscriber asked me if I could do a video about the CNC machines. I've got the uh, 3018, which is behind me here, see it, and the um, 4030, which is beneath you at the moment. We'll have a look at it in a minute. Now, um, my wife has asked me to do some plant labels um, for her, um, and I have these distinctly unhelpful. Can you see that? possibly a vegetable labels that my uh, mum gave me for Christmas um, so I'm going to re-engrave some uh, names onto these um, sort of a very simple Fusion 360 example and uh, and then using candle to run the CNC machine okay so I've already made some of these um, and here you can see I've done a coriander, kale, parsley and thyme and the parsley and thyme unfortunately had a couple of little accidents due to me not clamping the wood down um, sufficiently well so we'll address that but I will now go into fusion and we will see how I put this together go back to design I've basically drawn a block this is just the area on the label that I want to engrave rather than the entire thing um, I've then put on a text Put on some text within a sketch like this so you can edit that to whatever you want the next one i'm doing is cabbage um, we finish sketch the text if i edit that you see i've selected each of the letters and then um, done a press pull and brought them down minus one and a half millimeters uh, which will be our depth of cut all right to cut this out we go to manufacture First thing you need to do when you're doing manufacture, you need to create a setup. When you go to manufacture, it automatically brings in the model that's displayed in the design page. But you do need to tell it where your zero point is and the direction of your axes, um, making sure that you've got the arrow pointing in the positive direction for all of them. So as you can see, I've got X is going to the right, Y is going to the back, and Z is going up. They're the positive directions for the axes on my machine. So they can be set up using these bits here. The model is the body, which is selected. It's a milling operation and the machine. Um, so I've got a Sainz March and Mitsu uh, 4030. So I'm going to select that. Stock, no additional stock. Relative size box, that's fine. Part position is, I don't think I need to search that. Post process, give it a name, cabbage. Now the WCS is an important bit. Um, G54 is the first of several offset positions where you can put work. But for this, we're just going to use the one the G54, um, and I will come to that later on because you need to tell the machine where G54 is. All this does is when the program starts, Fusion tells the machine to go to G54. Um, so your machine needs to know what that means. Okay, right. Next thing is to um, create a toolpath. Now I've already done it here. If I um, clear toolpath, yeah. I've done a 2D pocket, which is on this menu here. 2D pocket, there we are, which looks like the right sort of thing. Um, edit that. So you need to select a tool. I've got a three millimeter carbide end mill which I'm going to use for this. Select that. It brings in all the defaults. My defaults are quite conservative um, as I'm just learning this. But I'm going to up the cutting feed rate to 700 because I had success with that on the previous ones. The geometry, um, I've gone for selected pockets and it just allows you to select the, the letters. So I've selected those. Heights, um, these are the heights that the machine um, assumes to move around and feed from and stuff. Um, the defaults are fairly safe. I've tweaked the feed height down a bit just to make um, make the thing quicker because uh, the feed height's where it starts its um, plunge into the material. Um, and it was five millimeters, so I've made it one and a half because otherwise it takes ages to find its way down into the material. Passes, I have Change the minimum cutting radius to zero simply because I couldn't get it to run a toolpath in these letters. 
probably because the cutter's a similar size to some of the narrower bits, like in the middle of the B there. Um, I've changed my maximum step over to one millimeter. That's the uh, amount of material that the cutter's gonna have to remove when it goes around the next pass. Um, by default, the stock to leave is on. Um, I'll turn that off because I don't, I'm just want to do a single pass and that's fine. Normally you might want to do a roughing pass and a finishing pass. So you would leave that and then you run another tool path to, to take off the remaining stock, but not doing that now. This is a really basic, basic thing. And finally the linking, this is how the tool moves between the pockets and stuff. The main thing I've changed is the ramp angle. It was at two degrees. I've changed it to 20 so that it gets down into the material quicker. It's wood, so it's not particularly difficult for it to cut. And two degrees just takes forever. And I've um, reduced all these numbers to one. So, uh, but I think everything else is basically the same. And you click OK. And you should get a tool path which traces out around all the contours. So the blue is where it's going to cut. The little red corkscrews are where it winds down into the material and the yellow is where it moves between um, pockets. So now we've got a tool path, we then have to post it. It's a funny name, but uh, so this spits out the this spits out the code. So if you go to the operations tab at the top, make sure that the uh, tool path that you want to output is selected. If you've got multiple ones, you can create separate files by just selecting 2D pocket, for instance, here. Um, I've only got the one, so that's fine. Um, the post processor is the gerbil one. Um, both the 3018 and the 4030 use a gerbil interface. Um, that's built into Fusion. Um, there are a couple of little adjustments to do. Um, I'm giving it a name. This one's called Cabbage and goes into my documents. Safe Retracts. Now this is set to G28 by default, but that seems to upset the gerbil machines. So changing that to clearance height, uh, blah, blah, blah. I think that's okay. So we hit post. And there you go. A big long list of G codes and um, coordinates. Close that. We will open open candle. We can open our file. Cabbage. There we are. So that shows the toolpath that we're going to want to cut. Then we've got to turn on the machine. So the first thing to do after switching on, obviously, is to reset and unlock the machine and hit the home button. Okay, now the machine's homed. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to set up the stock in the machine and find our G54 zero position. Right, so here's my piece of wood, which I am gonna butt up against this bit of aluminium that just happens to be bolted to the bed um, in a nice straight line. Uh, I'm gonna use this screw and washer to screw it down. I've obviously done this before, so I'll do that. All right, now my previous crashes were because I was being very lazy and I just used a countersunk screw to pin the end down. But I need to do something slightly more elaborate than that. So what I'm gonna do is strap it down with this bit of aluminium here. Next we use the jog control here on the right hand side to move the machine to the starting position which is our G54. Now we've got it there, these coordinates can be used to tell the machine where G54 is. I'll put this in the description, but the syntax that I found that seems to work is G10, G54, P1, L2, 
and then the coordinates x minus 383 y171 z44 um, now this might seem a bit unnecessary with just just one offset I could just zero the machine at that position uh, once you start doing more than one offset it becomes more meaningful um, and I just want to try and learn how to do this stuff before I need to so if we enter that it said OK now there's nothing for it but to hit the go button and we're gonna say send Right, rinse and repeat for spinach. We are, two plant labels done. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching.